We are at the Spa Lake of Panticosa and I'm really excited because of the place we are going. We are traveling through all these mountains to arrive to a place that mixes nature and technology. And to tell a great story, we need experts. And now, right now, I'm waiting for them. We need to do more exercise. I think we are quite tired and we've just started there. We have to cover a distance of one hour and a half, an altitude of 500 meters of difference of altitude. And we have to reach a hut that's at uh, 2,200 meters of altitude. It's really high. A hut, a mountain hut, uh -huh. which is actually incredible. So many people in the cities have no idea that these mountain huts exist. And for people that practice mountain sports and that are into nature, they're basic because they're a place where you can go to eat or to find refuge if the night you know, comes upon you. Or even if you have some problem, some health problem, uh, they are completely prepared uh, to tackle those kinds of things. And the fact is that th those mountain huts, maybe they are not well known by the lay people, but they are place there by people that's expert in, in doing that thing. We have the farm that manages 11 huts in all Aragon and it's quite important because without them the huts wouldn't exist but the problem is that those huts are in the middle of nothing and I suspect that that's an energetic problem. More or less, more or less, yeah. We need, I mean, we need electricity, we need hot water. For example, if, huh. if uh, somebody goes there and needs to charge his phone, you also need to give him electricity. So uh, the thing is that we are in the middle of the mountain. Uh, this is the kind of landscape we have here. And you can't bring a transmission line uh, to power the, the hut. So this is what we call an energetic island or electric island, which is a, a place where you generate the same power that you consume. So uh, in order to do that, you need a diesel generator and you need to burn the diesel there. So uh, this brings an advantage, which is that you can manage the energy you consume. If you need more energy, you burn more diesel. Mm -hmm. If you don't need it, you don't burn. But the disadvantage is the impact. Yeah, and it's actually uh, you know, quite considerable. Uh, it's actually even bigger than in similar places that would be connected to the grid that can actually consume energy that is from sustainable source sources. So it's uh, quite a paradox or contradictory that you would come to an area for its beauty, biodiversity, and you are really creating an impact in terms of the, of the fumes. That's it. actually an additional impact. I mean, you don't only burn the diesel, but you also need to bring the diesel itself. And uh, that uh, requires some trips of helicopter that also um, emits carbon dioxide and uh, it, I mean, it, it implies the, the burn of, of kerosene. The emission of greenhouse gases is actually really a massive problem at this point. We've known for a number of years and they've been accumulating to the point where we actually have double the concentrations of carbon dioxide, for example. Carbon dioxide is just a gas. Uh, we use it to live. We emit ourselves carbon dioxide. So in itself is not a problem. But in the atmosphere, when we have the concentration that we have nowadays, which we've never had this concentration the only recorded uh, concentrations like today's were about five million years ago, so you can imagine. And it has a greenhouse effect. It's like a blanket that you put around the earth. So now we are seeing how the temperatures are rising, even if all the nations have actually committed themselves in the Paris summit, climate summit in 2015, uh, right now, we're worried because with all the commitments, the provisions are that by the end of the century, we're actually going to go beyond three degrees. And this is something that we cannot do. There's so little time to react that we have to do everything that's possible to change to renewable sources of energy ASAP. Hmm. And that's why we have a problem, because in one hand, we need the high mountain hats, and in the other hand, they are normally a problem for, for climate, for environment. So, there's a place where life enters in the game. Sustain Hats is a collection of hats of high mountain that work with 
more sustainable energy sources. So maybe you can tell yeah, us yeah, about yeah. That's it. We, we yeah. are facing now a massive challenge, mm -hmm. uh, as, as you said. I mean, we are uh, emitting a lot of um, gases that uh, brings us now the challenge to revert the situation. Mm -hmm. We need to be more sustainable. And to do so, we have new technological advancements uh, with uh, renewable sources and other sustainable uh, technologies and solutions that brings us the possibility to revert what we have done. So uh, in this uh, scenario, I mean in, in, in this hatch, we have a series of solutions uh, that can bring some light to this uh, mm -hmm. landscape, let's say. So for example, one of them is to um, take advantage of the energy of the sun, uh, both for energy, for electricity production, and also for uh, heating, for uh, hot water, for example. So we have the panels for this, but uh, we need to count on the variability of the resource. Mm -hmm. We have the night, we have the clouds. So we need to store that energy. And for that purpose, we have batteries and also hydrogen storage. So uh, this allows us to uh, use the energy when we need it, uh, as well as we did with the diesel in this case, but in a more sustainable way. Mm -hmm. uh, some other um, solutions that we use in some of the huts are uh, the possibility to take profit of the water from snow. And then we can use it in places that um, normal water can't arrive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one of the solutions that we can find, almost the last one, would be biomass, in, in which we can generate um, heat and also electricity from um, biomass from forests. You've said almost the last one, almost. because there's another one that we're going to see, because we are here now, arriving to Bachimania, and I, I, can, I think I can say that Bachimania has another way of approaching this. It will be an astonishing landscape. Okay, yes. so let's go. Okay, let's, let's go. See. Let's go. Right now we are in Bachimania, but there's a lot of huts of sustained huts all around Europe. We have in Spain, in France, in Italy, in Slovenia. And just in case you want to visit them, the names are Lidara, Bachimania, Estos, Goriz, Capteyauset, Monfalco, Den Pagache, Torino, Kokbekov, Pogaknikov y Valentina Stanica. I just wanted to test if we had uh, hot water because here in the middle of nothing it's, it's difficult to boil the water and thanks to the electric autonomy and sustainable of Bachimania we have it, we have this, we have light, we have, we have everything. Fine, we have hot water, that's oh, enough yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was I was telling. I, I was telling that we have hot water, we have electricity, we have lights and that's great here in the middle of the mountain but Let's tell why we have that electricity. How can we get it is from it here? Is it possible? Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's go, go and let's Check tell what's special from Bachimania. Okay. As we've said, this hat is different. It's important because we have a dam. We we can use the water that is here, that is the, the, the resource that we have to generate electricity. Exactly. I think that's one of the wonderful mm -hmm. things about um, energies which come from renewable sources uh -huh. is that we are used in this uh, non-renewable way of doing things, which is kind of a linear extractive mentality. We just, you know, use diesel uh, for whatever needs we have. And in this whole new perspective, we really have to analyze what is the territory like and what are the natural sources, possible sources of energy. In a place where you have a lot of sand for a good number of hours, well, obviously you would use the solar panels, exactly. But in a place like this, we've seen on the way up, there's water everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we have these major differences in altitude, and this is giving us an opportunity to create energy. That's mm -hmm. it, that's key. We use the kinetic energy of the water. Um, it comes, it flows over the mountain, and um, then we 
take advantage of that, of that energy for the purpose we need. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have a turbine, a hydroelectric turbine, and the water goes into it. It produces a rotative movement. Similarly to what we see in a wind turbine, for example, that comes the wind and it rotates. Mm -hmm. Here it's the same, and um, it allows us to move uh, the, the rotor of a generator um, to generate the energy. So in, in this case, we can produce uh, twice the energy that the um, hut consumes. Mm -hmm. wow. So uh, we need to figure out what should we do with the, mm -hmm. with the remains. Because we can do something with the remains, That's I it. assume. That's yeah. it. And in what this, would, in this particular would... case, it's uh, pretty useful because, yeah. I mean, as we were speaking before, uh, we need to uh, produce electricity with diesel. Uh, this we substituted with the, uh, with the technologies we mentioned. And also for the hot water, we have something similar. We have um, a system in which we need to burn mm -hmm. diesel and with this energy remains uh, we can produce that heat that we will use afterwards. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that when we touch a bulb, for example, after some time it has been light, um, we, we feel the hot. Here we can use the same principle in order to uh, warm the water. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to uh, produce this hot water in a more sustainable mm -hmm. uh, manner. But the dam doesn't work each month of the year, so for the months that it's closed, we have to store energy from the other one that it's working. So the trick for doing that is over there. We are here in the cellar where there's all the electric systems of the, the hub, but I want to know how we get the electricity. Yeah, that's it. We, we, we find here the machines that allow us to generate the, the electricity, also to warm the water that we use here in the, in the hut. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the key technologies that we mentioned uh, is the hydrogen. Hydrogen is, is one of the most common elements in the universe, mm -hmm. but we don't find it uh, like an isolated element here on Earth. We need to uh, split the... the hydrogen and the oxygen from the water and this is the machine that allows us to do that. Mm -hmm. This is the electrolyzer. Mm -hmm. So we invest some energy into it and we are able to split uh, the, the hydrogen. Mm -hmm. yeah, at first you think, okay, you, you are um, consuming energy to do this process so this mm -hmm. should be more like a load, not, not a generator or a storage. Mm -hmm. But the key, the key thing with this is that um, if you have um, an extra amount of energy, like we spoke with the hydroelectric turbine, you can invest it into mm -hmm. produce this hydrogen, then store it, and then afterwards you will be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but where do we store that hydrogen? Uh -huh, that's the key. Uh, uh, outside, mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it, but there is a tank, a blue tank, and that's the place where you, where you store it. Okay, so here we are now in front of the um, hydrogen tanks and they are the seasonal storage of renewable hydrogen, which is really the key to this whole setup because it is the uh, electrical energetic uh, vector. Uh, the challenge is that when the, uh, the, the dam is not working, the water is not passing by, we need to take uh, energy from somewhere and this is where we're accumulating it. Mm -hmm. Now hydrogen is the very important thing to know is that if it was for some reason it was liber liberated in the atmosphere it wouldn't be a problem because it's not contaminant whatsoever. The only reason why it's here away from the house is because it's a flammable gas so that danger could exist. Uh, however the way that it's been preserved uh, under pressure outside out here it doesn't mean a problem in any sense and when the energy is needed and we cannot use it, use it from the dam, then we direct it into the hut. We take back the hydrogen we had in the tank outside mm -hmm. and okay, we invested some energy to produce it, now we want that energy back. Mm -hmm. So for that we have here the fuel cells, so the, the hydrogen goes into it, we have a, pr a process in which we uh, divide that hydrogen in uh, uh, hydrogen ions and also uh, free electrons that mm -hmm. flow. That's the power flow, actually. That's the, the electricity we will use here in the hut. The electrons. That's okay. it, that's it. So we have the, the electrons flowing, and then we have the, the, um, the ions of the, of the hydrogen mm -hmm. that we mix again with oxygen to produce water again. So we have electricity, and we have water as a subproduct. Mm -hmm. So it's done. It's that's already. it. We have electricity, we have the water, we close the cycle. Then there's just one thing left, that's uh, the joy of the electricity that has been obtained in a sustainable way. That's it, let's enjoy, enjoy the mountain. Exactly, <laughs> enjoy the, the hut and the mountain. It 
it's been two great days here with the electricity, the hot water, here in the cold high mountain, and I enjoy them a lot. I don't know about you. If you yeah, enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Amazing days. But this is just the start. This is the first steps of a change, of a project that wants to, to make better technologies, better ways of, of using the nature to make electricity in a sustainable way. But this project only exists because some partners believed in it. And these partners are Aragon Hydrogen Foundation, that is the coordinator of all this, Aragonese Mountaineering Federation, Italian Alpine Club, Touring Section, Environmental Park Parco Scientifico Tecnologico per l'Ambiente, Alpine Association of Slovenia, Development Center of Hydrogen Technologies, University of Ljubljana, French Federation of Alpine and Mountaineering Clubs. So knowing that there's a lot of work left to do and to improve all this, maybe we come back in some years, in some time, and we enjoy it even more. Yes, <laughs> that's definitely. It. That's it, so, yeah, so <laughs> yes. let's go. Let's, let's say goodbye to this place. Let's walk yeah. back. <laughs>